The Vanguard Group is comparable to a vehicle you could use to travel the whole country, even if it isn't the most eye-catching vehicle on the road. It nevertheless has a good appearance and is the most trustworthy. However, there are a few things you should be aware of about Vanguard index funds and ETFs that few people are aware of, which will undoubtedly alter how you perceive the business. I'm going to take you behind the scenes in this video to show you what truly happens at Vanguard. Hi there, I'm Fred, and welcome to our channel. If you are new, please subscribe and tap the notification bell to be updated for more upcoming videos like this. So, let's get started. But first, let me introduce you to John Bogle, often known as Jack Bogle, the man who formed Vanguard for you to understand why they are the way they are. In 1975, he started Vanguard, and from the start, he made the investor his first concern. Since Jack spent several years working in the professional investing industry, he had first-hand knowledge of the extent to which these money managers were taking advantage of people like you and me. To set some of this up and put it into perspective, it was reported that Jack's net worth was around $80 million at the time of his death in 2019, with half of it going to charity. I understand that sounds like a lot of money. And it is, but if you consider that Vanguard's assets under management at the time were close to $5 trillion, his net worth should have been in the billions of dollars. However, there is an intriguing explanation for why he wasn't that wealthy, which we'll discuss in a moment, so hold on. We have to go back to 1972, when the first index fund was founded, but it wasn't created by Vanguard. To understand why Vanguard is so special. Although Jack Bogle did not originate the concept of index funds in general, he made them one of the most well-known investments that we are all familiar with in 1975 when he introduced the first Vanguard S&P 500 index fund. Index funds weren't particularly common back then, which makes their current success all the more evident. Who in the world would want to accept annual average stock market returns? People laughed at him. Professional stockbrokers and private investors had only one goal in mind, to outperform the stock market. But given that it was quite similar to today, I suppose not much has changed. Because you know, big egos, you and your professional advisor need to be buying and selling stocks independently if you want to outperform the market. Currently, Vanguard does provide actively managed funds, but mostly because they want to provide their customers options if that's the route they decide to take with their investments. Consequently, they continue to provide those actively managed funds though the company was founded on index funds. Now, before we get deeper, please give a thumbs up if you are enjoying this video so far. And also, watch until the end because there's more of what you should know about Vanguard ETFs and index funds. Also, do you want your comments to be highlighted? Try our super thanks and your comments will be highlighted in this video or join our membership program. Now, do you recall when I stated that Jack forfeited a net worth of billions of dollars? He has never owned Vanguard exclusively which is the main cause of such. Although I'm doing well, I don't own Vanguard shares and never have. However, while I was in charge of the business, I received a wonderful salary. Well, a decent salary as well as a handsome bonus. So while I'm not complaining, I just don't have and never will have the level of money that the majority of people in this industry have attained as a result of charging their investors more than they were entitled to. A person often owns all, or at least the bulk of, a firm when they first launch it. Since they are the ones taking the most of the risk, they are frequently and just rewarded if it is successful. But Jack designed Vanguard from the start to be owned by the actual investors. Thus, if you possess any shares of a Vanguard fund, you are also regarded as a shareholder and owner of the Vanguard group. This is your money. Vanguard is in charge of it and you own Vanguard. 
Vanguard also operates as we distribute the costs across a large number of additional funds. There are currently perhaps 165 of them. Therefore, the costs are distributed based on fund zone costs, competition, fairness, and other factors. All you need to do is find out where banking industry incentives are to follow the money to determine who is the owner of the business. Vanguard views us as the incentives in line with our best interests because we are the company's owners. And the reason for it is that Jack believed that to be the proper course of action. Fidelity, on the other hand, is a privately held business that is owned by the families of the founders as well as current and former workers. Instead of rewarding someone who spends their funds, incentives are focused on those three groups. Since Charles Schwab is a publicly traded corporation, those who own its stock have incentives because BlackRock, the provider of the well-known iShares ETFs, is a publicly traded firm, its shareholders come first, not you. The good news is that Vanguard ETFs allow you to invest in them on any available trading platform. So even if you prefer Fidelity, Charles Schwab, or TD Ameritrade, you can still access those Vanguard investments and become an owner. When it comes to investment, Jack said, My ideas are straightforward. You get what you don't pay for. Since Vanguard investors own the actual corporation, the advantages of such ownership include some of the most affordable costs in the sector. For the owners to profit, other mutual fund businesses seek to make a profit in the form of lower fees. Vanguard is giving their shareholders the money that would have been their profit. The industry average fee ratio is 0.54%. However, Vanguard provides 130 mutual funds and 76 ETFs with an average expense ratio of 0.09%. That works down to $0.90 cents instead of $5.40 for every $1,000 invested. In addition to the fact that Vanguard's expenses are now quite low, the company has announced plans to reduce costs on its investment funds by $1 billion over the next four years. Since their major objective is to return value to you as their shareholder, Vanguard can lead the race to the bottom. Although ETFs are currently the favored investing vehicle, Vanguard was laid to the game by introducing its first one. However, it wasn't because they were passively waiting around. They deliberately waited. In 1993, State Street introduced the first ETF that tracks the S&P 500, SPY. They presently have $449 billion in assets under management, which is a significant advantage over Vanguard's entire stock market ETF which is in third place with $296 billion in assets under management due in large part to this head start. Eight years after the first ETF began trading, Vanguard introduced its first exchange-traded fund in 2001. This investment vehicle has been put on hold mostly because it was thought of as a short-term trading method. When the stock market is open, you can buy and sell ETFs at any time, just like you do with individual stocks. When you consider how many investors are more prone to panic sell when equities are declining in the short term, this might not initially seem like a significant concern. However, index funds for which Vanguard is famed really involve trading after each day's work. The shares of an index fund won't be bought or sold if you execute a trade for it during the trading day. Instead, they will wait until the market closes that day. This might not seem like a big deal at first, but when you consider how many investors are more likely to panic and sell when stocks are down in the short term, it is. However, Vanguard's well-known index funds entail trading. After a long day of work, if you execute a trade for an index fund during the trading day, the shares won't be bought or sold. Instead, they'll wait until the market closes that day. Vanguard began developing investments that resemble its index funds as time went on and they recognized their investors' desired access to this type of investment. For this reason, 
They provide products like the Total Stock Market Index Fund and the ETF version of the Total Market Index Fund which is BTI. Since money has been pouring into ETFs at an exponential rate over the past few years, it's a good thing they finally entered the market at the right time. ETFs at Vanguard made up only 24% of their total assets in 2021. However, 92% of their net flows during that same year were invested in ETFs. Here, I'm going to venture a prediction. Vanguard's ETF business will eventually surpass or match its mutual fund business in size. Wait for it, ETFs are simply becoming too popular. The values of Vanguard's founder Jack Bogle prevented the company from adding ETFs at first. He firmly believes that the best way to avoid the daily short-term upheaval we all experience in the stock market is to acquire and hold your stocks. Everyone has heard the tales of lottery winners who ultimately lose everything. They never earned it and they never learned how to gradually manage increasing sums of money over time. There are many lessons to be learned on the path to financial security, but they are frequently missed. It's not always something that can be taught. It needs to be genuinely felt. And that's it for today. I'm Fred. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you're serious about investing, I highly recommend you to know what investment vehicle is right for you between index funds, mutual funds, and ETFs. To learn more about this, click and watch the next video here.